Welcoming in now our next guest, Andre Rampersad of the Halifax Wanderers, who Oliver Platt has had quite the season from the turnover for the Halifax Wanderers off the pitch at the end of last year to being in a title hunt to finally getting that Trinidad and Tobago call. Andre, I feel like there's so much where we can speak to you about. And I think I will give you the option. First of all, welcome and thank you for joining us. But when you think of what 2023 has been so far for you, what are some of the things or the thing that's the top of the list for you? I mean, um, first of all, thank you for having me, guys. Um, always a pleasure. Um, the thing for me, top of the list, is uh, how the boys have been doing this season, you know, uh, with the turnover we had. Um, not really surprising because the quality is there, but as a fairly new team, um, I think the boys have really done well throughout the season. So that's my highlight so far. Andre, great to see you. Thank you for, for taking the time to speak with us. Um, I think there's a lot of people that would look at this Halifax team, look at you in kind of year one of a project with, under Patrice Geyser and say, if they make the playoffs, that's a good season for them. Do you believe this group can go further than that? And do you really have your, your sights set on a trophy here? Or is it kind of, you know, year one, let's 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 take it as a process? Yeah, um, for sure. We're definitely, you know, looking to win the league and probably going to win the playoffs as well. Um, you know, Patrice has come in and, you know, he set standards and, and now it's a, a culture of winning. So, yeah, definitely we try to to make the most of it and try to win as much trophies as we can and, uh, you know, you come first place, you qualify for CONCACAF as well. So I think there's a lot that we're aiming for. And maybe if we fall short, then we, we look at it as a learning curve. But at the end of the day, we play for everything. Andre, with these coaching changes, it's always so difficult because nobody ever accuses when something goes wrong, people have not caring enough. Sometimes you just need a different voice, a different face. But as the captain of the team, that's got to be tough for you to have that relationship with the coach for four years, to go into someone who's relatively new. So just how did you experience that that first time in your CPL career, getting a new gaffer? And, and how much did his commitment from literally his introductory press conference to you as the captain and you being important to this team help you feel more comfortable that this this could be a good thing for all of us? Yeah, um, you know, it starts with coach. You know, uh, back when he first signed for the team, he called me up and he was like, look, like, we're going to do something big. Are you going to be a big part of this? And, you know, we're going to help you because definitely he probably look over the years and he's seen, you know, the progress that I've made. So, yeah, he, he definitely made me feel comfortable first to begin. And then when I came in, I actually came into preseason a little over the time. And the team was already like really gelling together and like all the guys welcomed me and uh, they had so much respect. And yeah, from there it was just, you know, everyone just kind of gave in to what the plan was for the season. And, you know, we had a couple of conversations and everything just seemed comfortable and natural, you know. And after four years, I mean, like with the fan base we have, the fans definitely deserve something more than just probably a playoff spot or a fifth place, or a sixth place, you know, like definitely needs a trophy in this place. So... I think, you know, the different voices uh, definitely help. You've had some some good midfield partnerships during your time in, in Halifax. Andre Sissoko in 2020 obviously sticks out. You guys were outstanding that year. Uh, where does Lorenzo Caligari rank and, and how's that partnership kind of evolving from your point of view this season? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm lucky to be here, honestly, because when I look at probably if him and JGL would have been a partnership, then it would have been a... Mm crazy midfield like <laughs> the ball and went home with it you know it can, it can the ball so well like they're so so intelligent players and Caligaris came in and he showed a different gravy as we would say back home I'm sure you guys probably heard that term but yeah he's doing a different level and you know he step up to the task every day he's been playing 90 minutes every game and it's the same energy same consistent performance so yeah definitely him and and on the side of that, you know, you have me and Mo Omar, who has been, you know, sharing a spot. Mm -hmm. He's been excellent as well. You know, Armand Wilson, who's got his opportunity. So I think depth has a, a big part to play with it in in the way the midfield uh, is structured and in the way we keep keep playing. Andre, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I can say for personal 
um, anecdote, if you will. This is this is the most excitement and energy I've ever heard in your voice for being so in mid-season right now. I'm sure it's exhausting with the travel and with trying to keep yourself fit, but it just seems like you are thoroughly enjoying yourself right now and being the captain of this team. I, I do want to talk about the, the Trinidad and Tobago as well. Just uh, We haven't had the chance to have you on yet, so if we can go back in time a little bit, and, and we'll tie it into the CPL by saying you got to share the pitch with some opposition normally who became teammates for a couple of weeks just what was that like and how vindicating was it for you that all the hard work all the sacrifice you've put in has in fact led to that big moment that first cap yeah you know um definitely very exciting for me at first uh, i didn't really get the feeling until we played that first game i think it was against bahamas uh, way back and when i when i walked out onto the pitch i was like oh yeah it's it's real now like you know it's really happening you know that kind of feeling so yeah, but going way, way back, you know, 2020, they called me a couple of times, but I couldn't leave because of the COVID restrictions mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So in my mind, I wasn't really angry because it was something much bigger than than me just being held back. You know, it's, it was a, a real thing where the world was uh, going through. So I wasn't really too, too angry. I know the time would come. The longer I stayed in the professional environment, I know my time would come. And yeah, it was just about me, you know, taking the opportunity when I got it. And I think I did that. And, now, obviously, getting called back for a fourth time, a third time is actually excellent. Andre, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Uh, the best <laughs> best team you faced in the CPL this year. Best team you faced in the CPL this year, I would say, would have to be Calvary. They have been pretty excellent throughout the season. Uh, normally, it probably would have been a forge. But I think, you know, at times, the score probably doesn't show as, as, as the game went on, like... When we played them here, obviously we won, but I thought we were very dominant and we deserved a lot more than a 1-1 one -one and then we get a late penalty. And then, you know, the one that we played, the first one we played away to, to forge a 1-1 one -one as well. Like, they scored pretty late. They always seem to do that. But Calgary, it's been tough. It's been tough. Although they came here and they, you know, we did well against them. I think when we go to their place, it's always a hard game, right? And mm -hmm. when you want to look at the table, Calgary has been, been doing really good. I think they play really good football now. And... Uh, yeah, they've been really good. Andre, we're at the point of the year, dog days of summer, things, everything feels longer. The playoffs seem so close, yet there's still so much to do before you get there. How much of an impact positively has it been to bring a guy like Daniil in, to get Joao Morelli back? And, and instead of like having that trying to keep everybody together with tape and band-aids. It's you're getting healthier. You're getting more exciting as the matches progress. How has that helped you guys navigate this really difficult stretch of the season? Yeah, I think, you know, going back, to, it sucks for the player that had to to go out. But, you know, obviously we went on a run of like six games with draws and, you know, we were looking around of probably who was going to score the goals again and mm. all these different things that happened in the past. And then, you know, the opportunity arose when Jao wanted to come back and they spoke to him and they came to a decision where he's, he was going to come back. And then he came back and obviously you see the impact already that he's made. He's already on three goals, I think, you know. like. Yeah. And then Daniil, obviously, you know, all the experience and he just walked into the dressing room like he, he has been here since preseason. You know, <laughs> like he made everyone feel comfortable around him. You know, he always tried to help the younger guys and, and he's just added to what we've been doing all season, you know, and Obviously, he's a quality player, so just makes us better on the pitch and off the pitch. Andre, you've got five of eight here at Wanderers Grounds to, to finish the season. Obviously, a fantastic opportunity to put some points on the board there. I'm wondering of, of your entire time in Halifax now, and you've had plenty of memorable days at that stadium. Is there one that stands out as, as the best day or best night you've had at the Wanderers Grounds? Yeah, I think for me, that the one that stands out the most would definitely have to be TFC because, I mean... Obviously, the people come out all the time, but that game was, and we kept it so close as well. Like, you know, we did really well against a, a high opposition and we represented the league so well. And, you know, the people had so much good things to say, so much good players, like we're seen by, you know, big, higher people in the business. And, you know, maybe they go on to like, to play for these teams, you know, was definitely, definitely one of the, the best highlights. And obviously the 1-1 one -one, Sammy Salter scores late and, and then, yeah, we can see late, which is the story of Halifax for all the years. But anyway, yeah, um, yeah, that has to be the highlight for sure. The thousands of people that comes out here every night. I can't let you go without asking about Dan Nemec, who has been such a joy this season to watch. Coming in almost out of nowhere out of the NCAA and just truly 
finding his feet immediately, Andre, and quickly becoming that guy. Yep. A nominee for Defensive Player of the Year. Depending on how the season plays out, he might get some MVP caliber votes. He's been that good. Just how much have you enjoyed playing with him? And what impresses you the most about his skill set? Yeah, first off, you know, I'm going to say that, like, when you look at, you know, we talk about the team and blah, blah, But when you look at the, the recruitment process of the guys that they brought in was actually excellent. First to begin, like you just said, dynamic. Even Colin Watson, too, like, mm -hmm. who really knew these guys. Like, I was like, you know, we were having a conversation yesterday. And it's like, how did they find you, you know? And it was actually an excellent, excellent recruitment process. Um, but, yeah, dynamic has been excellent, man. He's, he's just, he puts his head down in practice. He goes at it every day, you know. He tries to play his midfielders as much as possible. He tries to make something happen. You know, he get the assist and then he's just ice cold, man. He steps up for penalties. He's so confident, this guy. And yeah, he's a very important piece of this squad, as we all know. And hopefully he keeps pushing to the end of the season. And I think, you know, defensively, he can get us he can get us to the championship. Anything else, Ali, or should we let Andre go? My well, last the one I'll ask you is <laughs> any any idea what's going on in the background there? We're, we're yeah, well, <laughs> we actually have like uh, we do this thing where we have like unit meetings at the end, and you know the attackers go one way, the defenders go one way, and we do little video sessions and stuff. So I think that's probably the attackers right now. Just, just <laughs> probably they were looking at some old video or something. Sounds like something attackers would do, wouldn't it, yeah. Andre? Thank we'll let you go enjoy and, and join in on that. We've taken enough of your time. We're very grateful of it. We always love speaking to you. We always love seeing what the Halifax Wanderers have for us in the CPL. But this year truly has been special. We hope you guys can keep it up and, and best of luck with everything. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you for having me. And it's always a pleasure. Have a good day.